Hi. Hi. In all walks of life, there are some people who have walked further, perhaps because they started earlier. And I am one of those when it comes to the subject of retirement. I've been 28 years retired. I'm now 87. The retirement I took way back in 1995, I was 59 years of age, still with plenty of vigour, vim, energy, and I got out there and started doing things almost straight away. I went into what they call phase three of retirement the day after I retired. Now, what am I talking about phase three? If there's a phase three, there must be phase one and two. Actually, a fellow by the name of Riley Moyes says there are four phases. And I'm inclined to agree with him. Those four phases are, firstly, when you retire, the honeymoon period. You think to yourself, you wake up that morning and I'm out of the office. I'm free. I'm on holiday. The seven-day weekend. But the seven-day weekend gets very boring after a while. You can only play golf so many times, go fishing so many times, go on a holiday for so long, because then you might start worrying about running out of money anyway, if you stay on holiday too long. So the honeymoon period of retirement could last anything from a few weeks to maybe a few months. Then after that, the period of, what am I going to do now? I've got all this free time. And of course, there are other things that come into it. You've lost your workmates. You've lost your routine at work. You've lost your prestige. You might have lost a bit of power. Nobody wants to know you anymore. You're a non-entity. And so depression can set in. And it does. But for many, they pull themselves out of that and go into phase three. And as I said, I started on phase three straight away. I knew that I wanted to go on working, but not paid work. I wanted to find the right sort of work for me, the work that gave me satisfaction. And so I tried many things, many different volunteer organisations. I was there, Mission Employment was one of them, trying to get people jobs, learning them interviewing skills. Other jobs were working with Drug Arm Australia, trying to help druggies get better, <laughs> even though I had no qualifications. Various jobs I tried. I found U3A, University of the Third Age, and started taking classes, going along as a student and then taking classes myself, presenting to retirees. And I loved it. This period lasted 10 years. But then I went beyond that, wrote a book with a colleague, and then after that other things. And gradually what happens is this. As you go out, as you find out what you really want to do, you go into stage four. And I'm in stage four now. But even in that so-called stage four, you evolve. You don't do the same thing. You find yourself, as far as your willingness to travel, contracts down. You might be doing like, for, like I'm doing now. About six years ago, I started on these, these videos. And now they're a big part of my life. All I have to do is sit down and talk. No need to travel. So what I'm saying here is, as the years go by, don't start worrying about whether your money will last because what happens, once you get to about 75 or so, you find yourself spending less. You don't go on these big overseas trips. You mightn't even go on long drives interstate. You stay closer to home. It doesn't worry you 
It's just a natural progression as we're sort of contracting down as we get older. You might have, when you first retire, you're fit enough to put on a backpack and go for a 20 mile hike. You can't do that once you get to 80 or so. It's only a five mile hike with no backpack. (laughs) And when you get to my age, 87, well, two or three miles around the block and that's enough. You come home and have a rest. But I'll, I'll say this much. You must keep up the exercise. If you want to go the distance, you must keep fit. I go to the gym twice a week. I do some yoga stretches a couple of times a week. I go for a walk at least every second day. You need to do these things to keep your body fit. You also need to keep your mind fit. Doing things you like to do, which involve some sort of concentration. I do writing and I do this, do this talking. So it's body and mind. But I think the main thing, and I've thought this for a long while, you have to develop a philosophy of life that makes it worth your while growing older. If you don't have anything to live for, if you don't feel that you have a a mission or a purpose in life, then you will quickly dwindle. But if you feel that you've got something really worthwhile to contribute, unique to you, and you have, find out what it is. It'll be something that you love to do and that you'll do for free. If someone asks you the question, if money was no object, what would you do with your life? If you can answer that question, you found what is right for you. And if you find what is right for you, you will be motivated to live a long, happy retirement. And you will.